All right, here we are in objective two where we're actually going to graph some rational functions. So as you see in this picture, it's another one of those time-lapse photos of airplanes taking off at night. And uh, they kind of look like some slain asymptotes. We know if we saw a bigger picture of this overall, though, they wouldn't be because they you know, level off a little bit and then eventually land. But it's a pretty sweet looking picture. OK, so we're going to start off by looking at a graphing algorithm. Algorithm is a set of steps that you follow to solve a problem. So here are step-by-step -step instructions on how to graph a rational function. Step number one, you always want to factor. You want to factor the top and you want to factor the bottom, okay? Because then it's very easy for you to find out where the vertical asymptotes are, where your zeros are, and then sometimes uh, factors cancel. Okay, step number two, find your vertical asymptotes. Where do you get the vertical asymptotes? You get the vertical asymptotes where the denominator is equal to zero. Okay, go ahead and put that on your graph as a dashed line. Okay, uh, sometimes though, you have a factor in the top that cancels with a factor in the bottom. In that case, you may not have a vertical asymptote, you would probably have a hole instead. Okay, so I found my vertical asymptotes. Next, I want to find my horizontal asymptote if it has one. And I find a horizontal asymptote by comparing the degrees of the top and the bottom. And then I would want to plot that as a horizontal uh, dashed line. If I don't have a horizontal asymptote, maybe I have myself a slant asymptote if the degree of the top is one bigger than the degree of the bottom. How do I get that equation? I get that equation by doing some division. The bottom divided into the top. I probably have to do long division, but occasionally I'll get to do synthetic division on that. You forget about the remainder and you just take the quotient part and plot that as another dashed line. Okay. Now I want to find my x and my y intercepts. I get my x intercepts from where the top is equal to zero. And my y intercept is ordinarily just the ratio of the constant terms. I plug zero in for x, everything disappears except for the constant terms. Now Back on step two, when we found my ver our vertical asymptotes, sometimes we had a factor in the top that cancels with the bottom. If you have a factor in the top that cancels with something in the bottom, you don't have an x-intercept for that point either. Okay, and then finally, you're going to connect all of these points, and you want to follow the lines of the, the asymptotes in nice, smooth curves. Okay, so let's put all of these things together, but first, Let's uh, talk a little bit in more detail about what the graph is supposed to look like around those asymptotes. So the first one, vertical asymptotes. Your graph can never cross a vertical asymptote. Why not? Because if it touched the vertical asymptote, then that means that that x value would work in the equation. If it worked in the equation, it makes the denominator equal to zero and black hole. Okay. so. If you have a vertical asymptote at x equals a, so there's the uh, vertical line equation, then that's where some interesting things happen in your graph. When you divide by zero, it creates a little black hole. So your graph is either going to approach positive or negative infinity, sometimes in opposite directions, sometimes in both the same direction. Okay, so let's look at when it's in opposite directions or when it's in the same direction. It's based on something that might be a little familiar to you. Okay, So the end behavior around a vertical asymptote is very similar to the end behavior of polynomials. This is what I mean by that. Let's look on the left hand graph here. Here I have one vertical asymptote and it's at x equals 1. On either side of this, on one side, on the right hand side it goes up and on the other side of it, it goes down. It has disco dancer in behavior. One side goes up and the other side goes down. Same thing is happening over here on the second graph but in the opposite directions. Okay, Still disco dancers, one side up and one side down on either side of the same asymptote. And this happens when the multiplicity of the denominator is just one. So in other words this equation might look something like this. Uh, my pen, where is it? It might look something like this. 
y is equal to something, I don't know what it is, over x minus 1. And it would be as if this was in the parentheses raised to the first power. This has a multiplicity of 1. It's an odd number. That means on either side of that asymptote, it's going to have a disco dancer in behavior, one side up and one side down. OK. Now, if the multiplicity is even for that factor, you can have referee in behavior, either both up or both down. So you can see on the left-hand graph, on either side of that vertical asymptote at 1, both ends are going upwards. On the other graph, both ends are going downwards. So the graph on, or the equation on this one might look something like this. y equals something over x minus 1, and this one in parentheses squared. It has an even multiplicity. With an even multiplicity of that vertical asymptote, it's going to have referee in behavior, both up or both down. OK, so now let's talk about the horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptote, your graph can cross one of these things. Take a look at that picture right there. It crosses the graph right here at the origin. You can cross an, um, a horizontal asymptote if you're having to pass through. So for example, this one, if you're having to pass through it in order to get to a 0, in order to get to the x-intercept. So it's possible. And by the definition, remember that the horizontal asymptote only really comes into play when x goes either to positive infinity or negative infinity. So you can think of this as being really weak around the origin, but gets really strong out here on the ends. And that's where it starts attracting. OK. Slain asymptotes, exactly the same situation as it was for horizontal. And that is, you can cross one of these two. You can cross one of these. You can see that in the little picture. If I have to cross it in order to get to an x-intercept. And just like on the definition for a horizontal asymptote, it's only attracting values at positive or negative infinity. So here's where it will get crossed, far, far away from the origin. OK, so let's graph one. Now, before you start graphing one, I want you to print out this like, handout from my website. Here, let's take a look. All right, so you want to navigate to the page for part two of graphing rational functions. And uh, there's the link for it right there underneath unit seven. OK, once you get here, then Rowan, what do they want to do? What do they want to do, Rowan? What? What? Play. No, no, no. What do they want to do with that handout? Um, print. Hi, guys. Print that handout. Oh, exactly. I'll be checking for that whenever uh, I check for your notes. So, yeah, make sure you print the thing out. <laughs> All right, you got your handout. You have grids printed out. You got space to do some work. Let's graph some of these rational functions. OK, so uh, I believe step number one is always to factor. If I look at this function, there's nothing to factor. Skip that step. Now let's find the vertical asymptote. That's the next step. So vertical asymptotes, where do they come from? Denominator equal to 0. So in this case, I just have x equals negative 3. I'm going to put that on my graph as a dashed line. I'm going to try to anyway. 1, 2, 3 dash that there and dash that there. OK. Now I'm going to find my horizontal asymptote if I have one. So the horizontal asymptote comes from comparing the degrees. Well, up top I just have the constant 1. That is a degree of 0. And on the bottom I have a degree of 1. The bottom is bigger than the top. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That is the x-axis. Now, um, I, if I have a horizontal, I don't have a slant, of course. So I have to do that. Now I want to find some points, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So x-intercept is where the top is equal to 0. Since the top is equal to 1, it's never equal to 0, so you don't have any. So none. Ooh, dang. 
and get any points. All right, how about the y-intercept? y-intercept I get from the, the ratio of the constant terms because uh, 0 would go in for x, it would disappear, and I'd just be left with 1 third. So this is 0 comma 1 third. All right, so let's um, plot that point then. 0, 1 third, let's say it's about right about there. Okay, believe it or not, that's enough information to graph this whole entire thing. I do not need another point to know what this graph is going to look like. First of all, look at this vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote on this, it has a multiplicity of 1, right? Because it's as if this was raised to the first power. That's an odd number, so it has disco dancer multiplicity. That means that one side has to be up, and then the other side of it has to be down. Could be like this, or it could be like that. We have to figure that out, okay? Now, I can't cross this horizontal asymptote because I don't have any x-intercepts to get to. So that means that the graph has to pass through this point right there and never go down below it. So think of the rational graph, the parent function, and what it looks like. This side is going to approach the vertical asymptote from that side, and then it must approach the horizontal down across the top of the x-axis. Now look at the asymptote. On the right side, the graph is pointing up. Since this is a disco dancer, the left-hand side has to point down. So this side's going to go like this. OK. Now, um, my graphs are going to look a little bit comical whenever I'm drawing it with this little stylus. But uh, what I've done for you is I've put the actual picture of the graph on here. So let's take a look at what it's really supposed to look like. So there's my vertical asymptote. Here's my horizontal asymptote. And uh, there was, ooh, I got that right on the money. So here's the actual graph. Zoom. And I was off a little bit, but that's pretty good for having just used my stylus. So let me just erase all of these marks so we can get a nice clean look for that graph. Ooh, man, that looks pretty sweet. There we go. All right, let's try one more for this video. So exercise four. So I put a sign on the door that says recording. Someone just tried to open the door. Anyway, so on exercise four, I, I want to factor. Oh, there's nothing to factor. OK, so I don't have to do that step. I want to find now my vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote, bottom equal to 0, x equals 0, and that's it. Go ahead and dash that in. Dash, 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 dash. OK, uh, horizontal asymptote, if I have one, compare the degrees, first power over first power. So it's the ratio of the leading coefficients, y equals 2. y equals 2, that's right here. There we go x-intercept, I need some points, where the top is equal to 0, so I'd add over the 1 divided by 2, it's 1 half, 1 half comma 0, plug that, plot that point, let's have a dot right there, and my y-intercept, y-intercept is the ratio of the, ooh, I don't have a constant term on the bottom, so this is none. Also, if my vertical asymptote is the y-axis, can't put a dot on it. So just like before, I have enough information to graph this whole thing. Because I can't cross that vertical asymptote. Oh, wait a minute. What kind is it? Is it a disco dancer or is it a referee? If I look back to this. This is just to the first power, or understood first power. So it's a disco dancer. One side up and one side down. OK, so it has to pass through the x-axis and then follow the asymptote. So it's got to start down at the bottom, go through my x intercept and then follow the line of the horizontal asymptote. If the right hand side was pointing down, the left hand side of the asymptote, vertical asymptote, has to point up. So start this one up above and then just follow your asymptotes. And there's the graph. Let's see how close I got it. Vertical, horizontal, x-intercept, Ooh, it was a little bit off right there. A little bit off. That's pretty dang good. 
erase it erase it there we go so you can get a nice clean look beautiful alright so that's all that we're gonna do in this video you can see from the sheet that you printed out that there's a whole bunch more so I'm gonna break this up uh, do a couple in each video so that they're not terribly long alright so let's look at the next video